praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, right where you are. Let's worship God. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I Cause my response is yes, Hallelujah You're my Redeemer Hallelujah Cause our response is Hallelujah You're my Hallelujah, my response is my response. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Cause you're my, you're my redeemer. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My response is my response. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Cause you're my. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you have rescued my life. Any worshipers this morning? Life. You have, you have rescued, rescued my life. And I'm never Shout, you have rescued my life. 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 Response is hallelujah, hallelujah. Cause you're my, you're my redeemer. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our response is, our response. Come on, lift your hands this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Cause you're my, you're my redeemer. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us again on our Bible study. 
Grab your paper, your pens, your tablets, and get ready as Pastor Thompson takes us further into our study. Finding strength to love anyway, part two. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, God, who made the sun to rule by day, who even ordained the moons and stars to rule by night. We thank you, God, for your holy word. We thank you, Lord, for our opportunity, O oh God. And we take this time to give your name all glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, God, that you surround us with your powerful, life-changing, anointing presence. And that your loving kindness, O oh God, is greater than what we can imagine, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for loving us and for calling us to walk with you, God. Lord, as we come to you today, Father, we declare your lordship over us, God. We pray, O oh God, that you will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Open our eyes, O oh God, and our hearts, O oh God, that we may be edified in your word, God, and that you may be glorified. Bless the pastor, O oh God. Lead him, O oh God. Guide him, O oh God. Direct his path, O oh God, in the holy word of your righteousness, God. Pour in him, O oh God, that he may pour out to your people, that they may grow in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So what will stop me, Pastor, as a person of being able to love others, what will stop me? Well, one, what will stop you is being able to love yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, you got to start looking at what are the reasons why you and I are not properly loving ourselves. Let me give you a few of them, and I want you to write this down, because we're going to fix this love thing, because you're about to get delivered. You're about to get set free. Your journey is about to get back on track. We just finished the series on that, because once you get this love thing, you won't give the power to the people you don't like. You're going to give the power to God and you. So you can continue to move forward no matter who don't like you. First thing that will undermine your uh, self-acceptance is guilt. You live with a lot of guilt. And you got to learn to give that to God. That will cause you to not appropriately love yourselves. Because you're keeping guilt from 10 years ago, 5 years ago. Old relationship, old marriage. Something happened on the old job. Secondly, what a cause you not to love yourself is failure and rejection. You didn't have a good outcome in something that you tried and you feel that people rejected you. They picked somebody else other than you. She married somebody other than you. They gave the contract to somebody other than you and you've not gotten over that and you're holding it against yourself. You have to learn brothers and sisters ladies and gentlemen, how to let failure and rejection go so it don't limit your future. Am I helping anybody? Well, well, somebody may say, but Pastor, I, you know, I, I, I have a problem loving me because I've had negative parental experiences. I had parents who didn't show me love. They argued at me. They fussed at me. They, they did a number of things that really tore down my appreciation for who I am. And so, and so because I've had those negative experiences, I struggle with loving me. Well, let me give you a word from heaven as one of God's heaven ambassadors. No matter if your mother and father did not receive you, they did not affirm you, they did not pour into you, you are special, you are unique in God's eyes, you are purpose driven, you have a destiny, and God has an assignment for your life. But it can't take off until you start loving you. See, that negative parental experience is hindering you from loving you so you can be able to love others. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Go to uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 1. I got to give this to you because I got a lot more to give you. Are you getting anything? Romans chapter 5. And we're going to look at verse number one. Uh -huh. I'm in New Living Translation now. 
Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace. Glory to God. Somebody lift your hands at home and shout peace. With God, because of what Jesus Christ, our Savior, has done for us. Because of our faith, verse 2, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I'm walking in something that I shouldn't be walking in. I've been blessed with stuff that I shouldn't be blessed with, not because of me, but because Christ has brought us into a place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. We can confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. You ought to shout hallelujah. Once you understand that Christ took care of all the things of the people who've hurt you, the people who have mismanaged you, now you can start loving on yourself. Because the greatest commandment, number two, is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And you won't love your neighbor more than you love yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, now let, let me go deeper right now because the question I want to ask, has anybody ever hurt your feelings? Have you ever found out that somebody had lied to you? You didn't get, get the raise at work because you felt you deserved it, you worked. Or you feel like you were rejected. One of the greatest things that you and I need to learn is how to trust God and walk by faith when people don't treat us the way we think they should. Somebody treats you wrong, the natural response is to get angry. Do I have a witness here? Go over to the chat box and say, Pastor, I understand. I'm there. Is to get angry. When we're mistreated, we're feeling, we feel like being angry is not wrong. But God's word for us reminds us that we should not return evil for evil. Lord, it's going to get tight in here. And we shouldn't return anger for anger. I'm going to say that again. We shouldn't return evil for evil. Somebody do you evil, you do them evil. No, that's not biblical. When somebody uh, come at you with anger, you go back and say, no, 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 no. The Bible doesn't support that. Have you ever noticed that being angry never makes anything better? And I know, because I used to have a quick temper. <laughs> I was, I was more angry than I wasn't. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and, and sometimes I would voice that aggression, and sometimes it would just be seething on the inside of me. The problem is, is that when you have unresolved anger, you're going to either do one or two things. You're going to either explode or you're going to implode. You're going to start breaking outward toward people or in the environments you're in, or personally, you're going to start exploding from the inside out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And you got to go to some people that you blow up on because you're blowing up on them because of some angry things and some things that has been done to you by somebody else. You're not even taking it out on people who did it to you. You're taking it out on people who love you that's close around you. And I want to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, this is a word from heaven on high to you. That living with anger is just, I'm going to give you a bottom line, BL, a miserable way to live. Christians shouldn't be living miserable with anger, guiding their lives, controlling their thoughts, controlling their emotions. Getting upset when things happen is not the way God wants us to fight the battle. Instead, when somebody hurts us, you got to choose to trust God with your pain. You always give them other things. Give them your pain or the injustice and overcome anger with good. Let's, let's go to Romans chapter 12. Are you, are, you, are you in the word? Are you getting something tonight? Glory to God. Romans chapter 12. I'm going to help you because uh, too, too, too many times you've given up the right of, of happiness to people. You've given up the right of peace to others. And God says, stop giving away the stuff I gave you. I gave you peace. I gave you joy. I gave you happiness. I gave you wholeness. So why do you give it away when somebody gets under your skin? 
Romans chapter 12, verse 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Who provide things honest in the sight of what? All men. I like that. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. Listen here. I like this. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says who? Says the Lord. Verse 20. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Glory to God. Listen, unless you have the love of God, you're not going to feed your enemy. Unless you got the love from God, one, then have the appropriate love for yourself, two, you're not going to feed your enemy. He says, if he thirst, give him something to drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Verse 21, highlight this, put it on your bathroom mirror, put it in your pocketbook, put it in your, uh, your cell phone. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. God is saying, ladies and gentlemen, that there is a right way and a wrong way to respond to injustice. The wrong way is you can get angry and try to get back at the person who hurt us. Or you can fight. Mm. Or you can fight the way God fights by trusting God to be your vindicator. I'm going to say that two more times because that's where you went wrong. You got to trust God to be your vindicator. Trust God to be your vindicator. While we bless our enemies and do good, God will take care of those who hurt us. Go to Psalms 37 real quickly. I got some Bible reading. Psalms 37. I want to show you this. I'm getting excited. Well, over there, God, I know we're getting ready for, for this Christmas season, but God said, I need to, I need to teach this because some of us have allowed people to come in our way and hinder the flow of God uh, because certain things have happened to us. Psalms 37, and I'm looking at verses 1 through 3. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Y'all get it? Neither be thou envious against the workers of the iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like grass, wither as the herb. Trust in the Lord. And what are we supposed to do, Pastor? And do good, so shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Why? Because when things go on in my life and people hurt me, I have to trust God with my hurt. Glory to Jesus. I have to trust God with my pain and I have to believe that God will be my vindicator. He'll give us the strength to go on and not allow that situation to get the best of us. Because when you allow that situation and that anger to come in, then it's going to be a struggle for you to live with God's peace and his love and his joy. And so I want to share with you that you do have to take responsibility of your behavior. When you're mad and you go off on people and you just let it out, you, get, you mistreated some people and you need to pray to God, but you need to also tell them you're sorry. Because God wants you to continue to say, stay sweet, continue to stay nice, continue to stay that with that spiritual persona that makes people want to be around you. But you're trusting God to be your vindicator, to vindicate you and do what needs to be done in that situation. The question is, will you trust God with it? You haven't in the past because you responded in anger. You responded out of resentment. But now, in order to love people, you got to trust God as, a, as the vindicator that he will win your battle. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. See, you got to love one another and help others to rise to higher levels by simply pouring out love to them. The greatest healing energy in this world is love. And I want to tell you something, love is infectious. If you hang with people who love, you'll start loving. 
If you're hanging with people who, who, who allow circumstances to not harbor on their life and their mind and their family, it'll rub off on you. If you hang with people who are focused on ministry, focused on helping, and they don't get caught up on the little stuff, it'll rub off on you. Real love is infectious. It rubs off on other people. And so what, what you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, I want to challenge believers across this world to make a decision today that you're going to refuse to live angry. Glory be to the name of God. Glory be to the name of God that you're going to refuse to live angry. You have to ask God to take control of your feelings. You have to ask God, God, I've, I've responded wrong in situations, whether it was some things with my parents, whether it was a relationship, whether it was marriage. But I'm recognizing now that my job is to love others without stopping to inquire whether or not they're worthy. No longer will I ask myself, is this person worthy of my love? No longer will I ask, is this person worthy of my love? No, real love does not ask people, are they worthy? They extend love as an extension of Christ. Who am I helping right now? Mm -hmm. and, so, and, and so real love will move in the place that you'll be able to see it. Yeah, you'll be able to see it. You, you, you still have to work at it, but there's some things that you'll be able to see when... when when, and I'm, I'm going to just ask a couple questions. Whenever, whenever you're on time, uh, but your spouse is not on time, are you patient? <laughs> Talk to me now. Don't, 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 don't turn that down. I'm teaching now. Uh -huh. when, when your spouse, let me talk to some marriage, marriage people. When your spouse needs attention, but you're focused on the task, are you really being understanding? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm talking to married people, but I'm going to get to some singles in a minute. When, when your spouse succeeds in their own sphere of strength, are you an enthusiastic cheerleader? Mm-hmm. When, when, whenever you're talking with people and you have a disagreement, do you mention how much you've done in the past when you're trying to get the upper hand in, in doing a disagreement with somebody? You got to go way back, way, go to the chat box, put W-A-A-A-A-A-W. You go way back and bring it up. Do you give people the impression that it's your way or the highway? Mm -hmm. Are you a type of person? And we're talking about love. We're talking about love. God told me to teach this and give it to you. And what you do with it is on you. I'm doing what he's told me to do. Do you keep a short account or a detailed record of your hurts in the past? Oh, God. When, when somebody close to you, mm-hmm, happens to be wrong, does your heart start screaming, got you, I knew I was right? Oh, God, oh, God, I, I know it's getting tight. We're almost done. We're almost done. I promise you that. Are you a person that's willing to look for the best and overlook the worst in people? Are you a person who's willing to hang in there when the easiest response would be, I'm just going to hang it up. I'm out. I'm done. I'm through. No more. Guess what? When you get this love that God has given us, John is convinced that loving God and loving others, catch this, cannot be divorced. <laughs> you can't go to the divorce court and divorce loving God and loving others. John says they are connected. If you love God the way we know it, you got to love people, not hate people, not be resentful for people, not to always be mad and judgmental at people. But one of the ways that we see that you love God is that you love people. Go to 1 John chapter 4 and I'm closing. John chapter, 1 John chapter 4, we, 
We kind of started there, so we're going to end right there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Just go hashtag TG. Thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. First John chapter four. And look what it says. Verse 11. Beloved, if so, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. John says he starts from a greater to a lesser. He says, if, if, and he does. He said, God so loved us. So if God so loved us in our sinful condition, we were not right. We were morally confused. If he loved us in a bad state, how much more should we be able to do for others in a bad state? Matter of fact, he went a little further, Johnny. Not only did he love us, but he gave us an example of love by sending his only begotten son and sacrificing Jesus to teach me how important it is to love others. So he's not asking us to do anything he didn't do. He's asking us to do what he did. He says, my motivation for loving you was love. The motivation you should have for loving others is through the love that I've shown you. Go to verse 12. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. He says no one ever beheld God. No one ever put eyes on God. In his essence, Moses had an experience with God. John says that what you got to understand, a Christian's love is their evidence that they're connected to an unseen God. Your love for people who don't deserve it is evidence that you're connected to an unseen God. Who? Your love for people, not perfect people, is no such thing as perfect people. Broken people, hindered people, wounded people, confused people, in bondage people, addicted people, lost people, they are perfect references that you're connected to the God that nobody's ever put their eyes on. So when they see a believer loving people, whether it's through missions, whether it's through time, whether it's through calling or praying, they're saying that that person is connected to the unseen God. And the only reason I can love people like God loved me is because he lives in me. I, I, I got to close this thing because I'm getting ready to jump over this, uh, over what I'm teaching on. Because he lives, <laughs> I can face tomorrow because, Lord have mercy, Jesus. I don't know about you, but you ought to get excited and say, listen, if God did it for me, I can do it for people. I've been hurt. I've been hindered. I've had people to talk about me. I've had people to look at me wrong, but I refuse to live in anger. I refuse to live without peace. I refuse to live without joy. I want to represent Jesus Christ. And when somebody see me loving, they see the unseen God. The unseen God is seen in believers who show love toward people, not just in words, but also in the. If you love God, lift your hands and say, Lord, I love you. Strengthen me to love people around me. Strengthen me to love people who who, who sown hate seeds in my life. Strengthen me to love people who wronged me and, and taken things that belong to me. Strengthen me that I can operate in peace, joy, happiness, long suffering, and goodness. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Listen, I gotta go. I gotta go. But I, 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 I felt the anointing. I felt you pulling me today because God says, I'm gonna teach you how to love anyway. You've lost a couple of years responding in hate and hateful things. But the Bible we read today says we don't overcome evil with evil. We overcome evil, hallelujah, with good. And when we do what God has called for us to do, then the people who've done us wrong will heap coals on their head according to the word. That's all I know. So I can't get stuck in my pain. I have to trust God with my pain. I have to trust God in some of the things I've done wrong. I've, I've exploded, I've imploded, but now I gotta just give it 
to God and trust him with my pains of life because I'm a happy person. I'm anointed person to succeed. I'm speaking a word to you. You're anointed in this season to go higher than you've ever gone before. And when those thoughts of people in your past, stuff in your past come back, say, I denounce you in the name of Jesus because I am operating in the love that comes from my God. And I'm not going to try to see if somebody is worthy from receiving my love. I'm going to love them because I want to be a person who follows after Jesus Christ. I can't disconnect my love for God and my love for people. They can never be divorced. They're married. Not only now, but also forever. If you want Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I will extend to him to you right now that you can come to him just as you are. Say, Pastor, I have so much anger in me, I can see red at times. My mouth goes south. My actions go in different directions. Well, I'm ministering to you right now. That season, I speak a word if you lift your hands, that season is over. That season is done. That season is with your past. Corinthians says, you're a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things become brand new. I got to receive this love from God. But then I have to learn to love myself. I have to learn to appreciate me the way God values me, the way God loves me, the way God has opened doors for me. And it's out of this love that I have for me that I'm able to love my neighbor. If you want to receive him, just point your hand at the camera, at your flat screen, at your iPad, your iPhone, and repeat after me, Father, I want to receive you in my life. I believe Jesus died for me and he got up with all power come into my life with all fullness in Jesus name you ought to shout amen you're saved God is in your life it's time for you to connect with the Bible believing Bible teaching church COJ would love to be your church I would be honored to be your online pastor Jesus would love to be your Lord and the Holy Ghost would love to be your comfort. It's as simple as going to our website, cityofjoygm.org, and just signing up saying, I want to be a part of this family. We teach the word, we preach the word, we love the word, and we share with you the things of God because we're a growing family, and we'll be happy to grow with you as a disciple. If you've been blessed tonight, we never want to close the service without giving you an opportunity to sow a seed into this ministry as it is our heart's desire to, to teach people and reach people and families and couples and marriage couples and youth and young adults and it takes resources to do that if you receive the word you'll see on your screen that there are a number of ways that you can sow a seed into this ministry you can give through Givelify which is a safe and secure way to give and we thank God for technology. Thank God for COJ. We, we're learning to do things that we were not doing two years ago. And I still scratch my head to what God is doing. You can sow a seed into this ministry and we thank you in advance. You can give through Cash App. It's a secure way for you to sow your seed. And we thank God in advance for you sowing your seed into this ministry because we understood we don't give to a church, but we give through a church. You can give through P.O. Box 250, Clinton, Maryland, 20735. You can mail it in, and we thank you in advance for, for your seed to help us do what God has called for us to do. We love you. We want to wish you a awesome, on behalf of Leading Lady, myself and Lexi, an amazing Christmas. I want you to enjoy your family. I want you to enjoy friends. I want you to love again. I want you to experience that favor that comes from God when you love people the way you love yourself. And I want you to be safe, and I want you to know that we love you, and we're always thinking about you, and we're praying for you. Father, we thank you for every believer who joined us in this study. We pray that you touch their lives. We pray that you rearrange some things that has not been in order with how they love people. We rebuke the enemy. 
We rebuke the hand of those serpents that tried to detour us from doing your will and from loving. The only spirit that loves us not to love is the devil himself. We denounce him in our lives, whether there are things that have happened to us 10 years ago, five years ago, five hours ago, 50 years ago. We decree your forgiveness on your people as they give their past issues to you. We got to trust you with, your, with our pain, trust you with our troubles, trust you with our hurts, whether they were emotional hurts, whether they were physical hurts, whether they were psychological hurts. We got to trust you, God. Hey, glory to God. We got to believe that you're going to handle it. You are our vindicator. We no longer walk in our own vindicating shoes, but we've taken that off and we've given it to you. We trust you and we praise you as we exhibit love. We want to be love exhibitors and we give you honor as you bless your people, your believers all across this world. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray and count it done. Oh, can I get 50 people to go to the chat box? Push amen, amen. Facebook, amen, amen. Twitter, amen. YouTube, amen. Listen, I got to go. I love you. Have an awesome Christmas. We look forward to seeing you. We will be in Rewind Wednesday for the next three Wednesdays. We want you to enjoy it and celebrate God. Listen, if somebody asks you, what is your life's motto? Please tell them from this house to your house, the joy of the Lord, it is our strength. Be blessed.